Welcome back! Today is your lucky day. I'm inviting you deeper into my lair of books. We're headed into the spooky, witchy season of October. And I have plans. Reading plans, that is. Hi friends! Today's video, of course, is going to be my October TBR. Wow, it is fall. The year is quickly coming to a close. It's October. I am so excited. I am ready for all the fall things. The cozy books, the cozy sweaters, I, the pumpkin spice stuff is already back in full force. I love fall. It is my favorite season and I am particularly excited to share with you all the books I'm planning on reading in October because I have a lot of great spooky reads. I have some cozy reads. I feel like my TBR, while perhaps a bit excessive, is very on point for the month. So let's go ahead and dive into all of the books that I am planning to read this month. As usual, I'm going to start with all of the book clubs and read-alongs that I'm participating in, if any of you guys want to join. To begin with, I have my patron book club. Patrons get to vote on a book in a different genre every month, and of course, it's October. We did horror. What else were we going to do? But October is a little bit different because we actually have two books. There were two books that were kind of neck and neck, one that was a close runner up that I had been wanting to read anyway. So I kind of said, hey, for anybody who wants to join me in reading the second book, let's do that as well. So the official primary book for patron book club is The Haunting of Ashburn House by Darcy Coates. One of my patrons, Beth, read this and loved it, said it was fantastic. It's like a gothic haunted house story. I'm very excited. This is like perfect for the month. And then our bonus book, because we're being ambitious this month, we're going to be reading House of Leaves by Mark Z. Danieluski. I am really excited about this. I feel like this book is kind of notorious in horror circles. I have a feeling I'm going to be into it. I know some people feel like it's kind of gimmicky, but I like stuff like this. So this is told with like three different narratives. It's mixed media and it's kind of a weird format. And so there's like I think three different stories kind of going on, some in like the footnotes or something. I haven't started it yet, but I'm excited to check it out. A lot of people adore it. They say it's pretty damn scary and I know there's like portions that you have to read in a mirror because they're backwards there's stuff where you have to like turn the book upside down so it only exists in physical copy uh, but we're gonna tackle it so some of my brave patrons and then I found out that my friend Leanna from Leanna's library is also reading this and I think it should be officially announced by the time this video goes up, but she is going to be joining me permanently as a regular co-host on Chapter 3 Podcast, which is always linked down below. And so since we're both reading this in October, we're going to do an episode devoted to it. So I'm really excited for that. Uh, okay, so that was a long way to say I'm reading these two horror books for Patron Book Club. Then every month my patrons are entered into a raffle and the winner gets to pick a book from my TBR that they want to see me read and review. For this month, the winner was Erin and appropriately she picked The Near Witch by V.E. Schwab. This is the newer edition of V.E. Schwab's debut novel that is witchy, so it seems appropriate for the season. It's something I've been meaning to get to, and this seems like a great opportunity, so I'll be reading that. Then what is fall without some nice, big, cozy fantasy books to read? So of course I've got the two read-alongs that I'm hosting. One is for the Broken Earth trilogy. This month we're going to be reading The Obelisk Gate by N.K. Jemisin. This is a reread for me, and I am so excited. I absolutely loved my reread of the fifth season, and I'm, I'm just certain I'm going to continue to enjoy the whole series. And then there's also a read-along of The Two Towers by J.R.R. Tolkien. This is the second book in the Lord of the Rings trilogy that we're reading and discussing in live shows. I'm excited because Fellowship of the Ring was a reread for me and I freaking loved it. I loved it way more than I did the first time around when I was a teenager and I never made it all the way through The Two Towers so I'm excited to finally get to that. The final like book club read-along pick is for Blades and Bodice Rippers book club. This month it's going to be hosted over on Amanda's channel from The Naughty Librarian and we're gonna have an evening dress up live show because it's right around Halloween and of course we're reading The Last Final Girl by Stephen Graham Jones, uh, yet another horror book. This is not very long so it'll be pretty quick to get through and I've now read two things from Stephen Graham Jones and really loved both of them so I'm excited to check that out. Okay what else? I'm doing, I'm doing some other things. I have a lot going on. Then in October, there's two readathons that I want to participate in. I have so many things on my TBR this month, I can't do a lot, but I'm at least going to read 
like one or two books for each readathon. The first one is Latinexathon, and this is running from October 6th to October 15th. You can check out the announcement video that I'll link down below from my friend Jocelyn over at Yogi with a Books channel. They have four prompts, and I have two books that I think I can read to fulfill all four, so we'll see if I can get to both of them, but I plan to at least read one of them. The idea is to read books by Latinx authors, and the four prompts are something short, something spooky, something cozy, and something seasonal. So for my spooky pick, I'm planning to read Velvet Was the Night by Silvia Moreno-Garcia. This is a crime noir thriller that just came out. I love Silvia Moreno-Garcia. It sounds like it's going to be a little bit spooky, creepy book. And yeah, this seemed like a good one. Again, not super long, but a good fit. And then for the other three prompts, something short, cozy, and seasonal. I've been told I'm getting in the mail this Harlequin category romance, which are not very long. They're about 200 pages, and I really want to read it. So it's this one by Adriana Herrera. It's a holiday romance, so it's cozy, it's seasonal, it's short. There is my Latinxathon TBR, and I would encourage you guys to go check it out and get involved as well. This is just for the first part of October. Then in the later part of October, I didn't write down the exact dates, but I will link the announcement video down below. There is Brie from Locked Booktician's Brainchild Black Aweenathon, and this looks really cool. She's got like merch and art and prompts and events and sprints and like all the stuff that she's doing, so definitely go check it out. She's got a lot of amazing co-hosts for this. The basic idea is to read like creepy horror books by black authors and there are different prompts you can follow. For this I'm planning on reading one of two books that are potentially on my TBR. I would like to say I'll read both of them but realistically that's probably not gonna happen but maybe this will give you some ideas of books that you could put on your TBR if you decide to participate. The one that I think I'm most likely to read is Catherine House by Elizabeth Thomas. This is a very polarizing book. I've seen people love it. I've seen people hate it. And so I was like, I need to just read this for myself. I know it's really kind of weird, but the premise of it sounds interesting and it's creepy and yeah. So this is one that I might pick up. The other possibility is White Smoke by Tiffany D. Jackson. This is a YA haunted house story that I've heard is like actually quite scary at times and I'm really excited to read it. I pre-ordered it. It just came out right in time for October. So go check out the announcement video for Black Aweenathon and uh, participate. These are my two possible... Oh, I just realized they're like the same color pattern. Oh, weird. It's like the purpley blues. Ooh, man. I should do like an Instagram photo with these. They would fit so well together. Then I'm supposed to be doing three buddy reads this month. Like I said, I may have kind of overextended myself. We'll see how this goes. Ashley, who is one of my patrons, and you can find her on Instagram at Books with Ashley, I believe. I'll link her down below. We're planning on reading Wild Card by Marie Lu. This has been on my TBR for so long, and um, and it's kind of shameful because I was able to get an advanced copy of it and I still haven't read it. I really love Marie Lu. I like her writing. I loved the first book. I think initially I put it off because some of the early reviews were like mixed and I had loved Warcross so much I was nervous about it. But then later reviews were more positive, so I think I'll still enjoy it. It's been long enough. I want to read it, so um, we're planning on reading that in October. Then with Isabella from the Feminist Bookworm over on Instagram, I am possibly, I don't know if this will happen in October or November, Isabella, but I do want to read this and talk to you about it. Um, but she had an extra copy of Ecstasia by Claire Legrand and sent me a copy, which I am so freaking excited about. This is so far one of my most anticipated releases for 2022. It's coming out in February, and this is Claire Legrand's second horror novel. She wrote Sawkill Girls, which is one of my most favorite horror novels. And this one, it says Girl Saint Witch. So I think this has like a cult thing in it. And I like, this is going to hit all my buttons. I'm so excited for it. And it does seem like the perfect month to read it. So I would like to read it if I can in October. And then lastly, with Leanna, I'm going to be reading Sword and Citadel by Jean Wolfe. This is the second half of the Book of the New Sun series. Um, they've, got, they've got these beautiful fancy new additions from Tor. And yeah, I'm excited to read some some classic sci fantasy with her. This is a much larger physical TBR than usual for me, if you couldn't tell. 
Um, okay, a few other things. The first part of the month, I'm going to be reading Love and Lavender by Josie S. Kilpack. This is coming out in November. It's an advanced copy of a proper romance that I was sent from Shadow Mountain Publishing, and, it's, and I'm reading it in preparation for a video I'm doing. So this is definitely going to be happening pretty early in the month. It sounds like it's going to be really good, and if you're looking for, like, cozy reads for the fall and you don't want the spooky, scary stuff, this might be a good one. This follows a disabled heroine. She was born with a club foot and teaches at a private girls school because she knows that she's unlikely to get a good marriage. Then her uncle offers her an inheritance if she does get married and she finds out that the girls school is going to be closing so she has to consider her options. Meanwhile another character also needs to get married for reasons but doesn't super want to and so they decide to do a marriage of convenience. I love a marriage of convenience plot and these proper romances I've generally enjoyed them. I also have read another book from Josie S. Kilpatrick before and I really enjoyed it so I am looking forward to that. And then another physical arc I have that's coming out in November that I'm hoping to get to is A Marvelous Light by Freya Marski. So this is a queer historical fantasy. It's got like a male-male romance and somebody said if you ever wish Downton Abbey was sharper edged and full of magic this book is for you. Uh, which I mean yes that sounds exactly like something I would love so I definitely want to read it. And then lastly, in September, I did an announcement video talking about my plan to do these reading vlogs, looking at books that have been made popular on TikTok. So in October, I'm planning on doing the first of the five reading vlogs. And the two books that I'm reading for that are A Touch of Darkness by Scarlett St. Clair and Neon Gods by Katie Roberts. And they're kind of an interesting match because they're both modern day Hades and Persephone retellings and kind of like steamy romances. So we're going to try those out. Again, kind of a darker take on romance, which seems appropriate for October. Lastly, of course, I do have some e-arcs from NetGalley that I'm going to try to get to this month. <laughs> we'll see what happens. I'm like looking at all of these things and I'm like, oh, how, uh, like what am I actually going to get to? We'll see. A couple of them are novellas and some of them are romance, so I'll, I'll probably at least read some of this stuff. I have Flowers for the Sea, which is a novella. I anticipate probably reading this. It's like a... Unfortunately, nothing I said here was right, so I'm telling you now. This is a novella that reads like Rosemary's Baby by way of Octavia Butler. It's a lush gothic fantasy about the prices we pay and the vengeance we seek, and it looks great. We have When Night Breaks by Janella Angelis, which I'm very excited for. This is the concluding volume in the Where Dreams Descend duology, so I do really want to get to that. I've also got Along the Saltwise Sea by A. Deborah Baker. This is the second book in a series that Shauna McGuire is writing it's like this really meta thing because this is an author mentioned in Shauna McGuire's book Middle Game. <laughs> anyway, um, I really liked the first book that she put out with this, so I'm, I'm going to read the other one. I also have Shattered Midnight by Danielle Clayton. This is the second book in a series coming out from Disney that's kind of fun, following a cursed family, and each book is by a different YA author. This one is set in 1920s New Orleans. Should be fun. I've also got All the Feels by Olivia Dade, which I have definitely pre-ordered. I really, really love the way that she writes romance and fat representation, and I've heard some really good things about this book. And lastly, there's a debut I'm excited about called Within These Wicked Walls, which is a retelling of Jane Eyre. Um, but I think there's magic or like horror or something. I don't remember exactly, but it looks amazing and um, I want to read it. So there you go. Those are all the books on my TBR for October. Will I get to all of them? I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. I'll do my best. I'm at least going to read most of these and I am really excited for them. I'm excited for like all the spooky vibes, all the cozy fall vibes, and getting to a lot of stuff that I've, I've been wanting to read. So it's going to be a good time. Talk to me in the comments down below and let me know any of your thoughts or feelings on the books I talked about in this video. This is a much longer than usual TBR video because I've got all of the different uh, readathons and stuff I'm talking about. But let me know your thoughts down below. And for question of the day, tell me what you're excited about heading into October, into fall. This could be book related. This could be pumpkin spice lattes or sweaters or whatever. Like what is the thing that you're really excited about heading into fall? Let me know in the comments down below. And for those of you who are south of the equator and don't follow the same seasons at all, let me know what season it is where you live and what you are looking forward to and how weird it is that like the seasonality is different depending on like where people are that you're watching. It's kind of funny. So talk to me in the comments down below. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you all so much for watching and 
I'll see you next time.